and thank you very much for the opportunity to um, to do this um, this uh, project um, to both to CIRM as well as to the state of California. I think it's a great opportunity for, um, for a very debilitating disease. My lab has been working on for the last 10 years uh, understanding how normal skin development occurs and what happens when skin then becomes cancer. So this balance between normal skin and cancer. I think that's very useful for this particular project. Um, so uh, uh, Lynn, Dr. Lane, and Dr. Verning have told you that um, to be able to take patient cells, make them pre-program into skin stem cells, um, correct them by Hamas recombination, but then the question is you need to be able to differentiate them into keratinocytes and then um, develop the methods to scale them so they can put them onto patients in a safe and clinically appropriate way. Um, and so the great potential for IPS cells, as, as you know, is being used not just for skin but for other organs as well. And so really the question is how to get them to differentiation the keratinocytes and then how to um, test them thoroughly uh, to make sure they're safe and then to scale the methods um, for patients. And so um, to our collaborators uh, and two groups have recently developed, shown here, uh, uh, made it possible to take um, human yes cells and differentiate them into keratinocytes. As you can see on the top of the slide is a, on the diagram that the yes cells, when you put them into certain culture media, um, they um, over time will differentiate nicely into the keratinocytes. Um, and then so that these methods are, are possible using the right media and the right um, conditions. And our collaborators, Dan Aberdam um, in uh, Nice, um, as well as another group in France, have really pioneered this method, um, allowing us to then, as a basis to start, to use that um, to then scale it to the patients. As you can see in the lower panels here, um, these cells have the ability to make um, beautiful human skin. Using these grafting models I just mentioned, you can take the cells and um, they make beautiful human skin for at least a short time. So the, the, the basis here to start to make keratinocytes at work um, is, where, is our starting point for this grant. And so what things we need to do to test these out thoroughly, we need to make sure that they contribute to skin um, and differentiation in a long-term way. They're actually really skin stem cells. We need to make sure they have stem-like behavior in skin tissue. And more importantly also, the safety issues, before we put them on patients, we need to make sure they don't form tumors um, and they don't have keratopic abnormalities that can prevent them from working the way we want them to work in our patients. And so I think the skin is one, as, as we all mentioned, is a beautiful place to start because um, we can actually take these um, human skin stem cells, put them on the back of a mouse, and watch them. And so here you can see the diagram. On the top part is the diagram of the, of the model. You can take um, the skin uh, keratinocytes, put them on human um, devitalized dermis, then graft them onto an immunocompromised mouse. And on the bottom part, you can see the kind of stem cell assay which we can use. The orange cells on the bottom are the basal keratinocytes, and we can just watch them over time to make sure they have stem cell activity. Um, if they do, then you can watch them grow and mature in the skin tissue. Um, and if they um, form tumors or have problems, we can actually watch and know that they do that over time. So we can actually test them rigorously. And that's one of the advantages of skin, using these uh, very uncharacterized um, iPS cells for tissue. So on the bottom part, you can see some data we can take on the left-hand side. You actually can say each individual marked cell, which is in green there. And you can actually look at what differentiation markers that cell expresses. Um, an individual cell. And on the right, you can see is a stem cell assay. On the top part, the orange cells, the pink cells on the bottom are the stem cells. And you can watch them over time as they contribute to different cells in the skin individually. Um, and so um, if on the bottom part here, in this um, from uh, Paul Kavari's recent work, um, they identified a gene which actually prevents it, the, the, the keratinocyte stem cells from becoming stem cells. And you can see as it moves to the right, the, the, the tissue starts to shrink as the stem cell function goes. And so you can actually look at that and know when a stem cell, when the, if the keratinocytes we identify in this, in this grant um, are, not, are not working correctly, we can, we can know that. And so I think we have the, the basis then to differentiate these, uh, um, the cells into keratinocytes. But what else do we need? We need to scale. Um, what we need about is a 10 to the 10th um, keratinocytes to make um, a graft of about um, uh, 10 centimeters square for the patients. So we need to be able to scale the iPS cells into large enough numbers of cells um, and then differentiate them into keratinocytes um, in a differentiation assay and then do that in an FDA-approved or a good manufacturing process manner, GMP manner, um, uh, and then file the, um, the IND. And so to do that, we need um, an expert who is um, an expert in manufacturing process for um, stem cells. 
and we're fortunate um, to have um, this um, CIRM-funded GMP facility at UC Davis that's directed by um, Gerhard Bauer, who's in the audience today, um, to um, work with us um, for that. Um, this is, again, uh, uh, CIRM-funded. $20 million went in to build this large facility at UC Davis, state-of-the-art 6,000-square-foot GMP facility um, that just opened this month, I think, um, uh, for use by, in, in projects such as this. And so this is a, a beautiful new facility with six manufacturing labs, three intermediate labs, and a variety of different um, facilities. Here's a picture of the, um, uh, you know this is just open because it's clean, there's nothing on the floor, um, there's, you know, uh, pipettes aren't everywhere, so um, that'll happen probably next week. But for now, it looks beautiful and clean, um, and, and, and uh, perfectly uh, willing and available to, for us to use. Okay, so let me just summarize um, the project and what we've known today. We know that the advantage of cutaneous stem cell therapy, the skin is easily visible. We can treat dominant recessive diseases. There's over um, close to 300 genetic diseases that affect skin. Um, and the iPS cells can be used to benefit ulcers, burns, and other skin defects. Um, the corrected iPS cells, as we've mentioned, can be used not just for skin, but if we can develop differentiation assays, we can use them for other um, horrible diseases in the nervous system, bone marrow, and, and other, cornea, for instance. And so I think that this project is not just for skin, but has advantages in other tissues as well. And so that's, hopefully, we can use the, the, what we've learned here can be used in other, other diseases as well. And so just to summarize, um, for, for dystrophic EB, which is a, which is a horrible disease um, where wounds never heal, we developed, uh, uh, I think, a very talented group of clinicians, both at Stanford and in Europe, um, shown up in the upper left. Um, a pretty uh, wonderful and collaborative uh, basic science laboratory group um, at Stanford, uh, uh, as well as in Europe. Uh, expertise in manufacturing um, skin stem cells uh, at UC Davis with Gerhard Bauer, and regulatory expertise um, uh, with the FDA to try to put together uh, this IPS-based um, stem cell group for um, dystrophic EB. And so with that, again, thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to try um, and develop this technique, this, this um, therapy for our patients. Um, and I hope for our patients um, that we can, um, can translate this um, for their benefit. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, this team. Let's give them all a round of applause. <clears throat> and we will move uh, directly into our agenda. Thank you.